Okay, let's go back after the detailed discussion. Let's go back to see the sampling distribution in your notes, but very briefly, so we can see the big picture. We begin with x bar follow normal distribution and also y bar follow normal distribution. So x bar minus y bar, because normality is closed under linear combination, still normal, with mean x bar minus y bar and variance of x bar minus y bar, okay? And also because in the real life application, right? We don't know sigma x and sigma y, we replace by sx and sy. Everybody, please flip to the next page, okay? Next page, please. Let's look at the next page. So, x bar minus y bar, subtract by its mean, divided by standard deviation. You convert to z-score. And mean of x bar minus y bar is what? Mu x minus by. And variance of x bar minus y bar is sigma x squared over nx plus sigma y squared over ny. But in the real life application, you don't know sigma x, you don't know sigma y. So you replace by Sx and Sy. And after this replacement, it's no longer standard normal. It is what? Student P distribution. But not exactly, just approximate. Okay? Uh, remember, we have two different one, approximation of degree of freedom. This one is the easy one, but it's not as accurate. But let's just look at this one, okay? Nu equal to what? Minimum of Nx minus 1 and Ny minus 1. Nx is 21, minus 1 is 20. And Ny is 23, 23 minus 1 is 22. Minimum of 20 and 22 is what? 20. So our test statistic follow what? P with 20 degree of freedom, okay? Now, based on this, we can go ahead to talk about how can we compute p-value, okay? Step four, compute p-value. How we define p-value? P-value, by definition, is under the assumption that h naught is true, how likely test statistic behaves at least as extreme as observed, okay? So let's look at the summary distribution of x bar. Easy to explain for the picture, okay? So let's look at x bar minus y bar. We know x bar is normal, y bar is normal. Normality is closed under linear combination. So x bar minus y bar follow a normal distribution. And the center of the normal distribution is expected value of x bar minus y bar. And expected value of x bar minus y bar is what? Mu x minus mu y, okay? But under h naught is true, mu x minus mu y is zero. So under h naught is true, we expect to see what? No difference. But what the data collected says? Well, x bar is 51.48, y bar is 41.52. And where are these two numbers coming from? Look at here. This is what? This is x bar, this is y bar. Remember that? And later on, we're going to use sx and sy as well. Okay? So let's look at. Observe x bar is 51.48, observe y bar is 41.52, and the difference is 9.96. Okay? And under h naught is true, what we observe should be close to what we expect. If under h naught is true, what we observe don't close to what we expect. Further deviate from the expectation is called extreme. So this shady area is what? P value. Okay? Let's try one more time. What is H A? What's H naught? H naught is what? Huh? Treatment make no difference when you compare with what? Control. That means new directly reading activity actually is what? Useless. So you expect to see no difference, is zero. But correct data says what? Oh, 9.96. If further what? More than 9.96. This is kind of support. HA is true, don't support H9 is true, okay? 
Because under H9 is true, you expect to see this number close to zero. If this is not close to zero, then further deviate from zero. That's called extreme. So this upper tail is a p-value, okay? And how can we find the size of the upper tail? Well, just like before, we need to standardize x bar minus y bar. And how can we do that? Okay, we're gonna work on this one very slowly and make sure you understand every single steps, okay? So let's see. Our test statistic, x bar minus y bar. In order to make inference, uh, we determine, we assume x bar follow normal, y bar follow normal. So x bar minus y bar is still normal. And if we want to use table to check out the probability, we need to standardize x bar minus y bar by subtracting its mean and divided by standard deviation. But mean of x bar minus y bar is mu x minus mu y. And variance of x bar minus y bar is sigma x squared over nx plus sigma y squared over ny. But in most real life application, we don't know sigma x and we don't know sigma y. So what can we do? We use sample standard deviation x to estimate sigma x. We use sample standard deviation y to estimate sigma y. After this replacement, Huh? This is no longer one, a z distribution. This random variable follow up, a t distribution. Okay? So let's look further, further up. Okay? Look at here. Uh, from the table I just show you, observe sx is 11.01. Nx, sample size of the treatment group is 21. And sy, the observed. Standard deviation for Y group, for control group, 17.15. You squared it, that's variance. Divided by NY, the sample size for the control group, 23. You plug in those numbers. And the numerator, X bar minus Y bar, subtract. Under H0 is true, mu X, mu Y equal to zero. So this is X bar minus Y bar, divided by this term. And if you simplify the calculation, you find this term is 4.31. So we say x bar minus y bar subtract zero divided by 4.31. We're gonna convert the low score x bar minus y bar to what? To a t score. And this t is 20 degree of freedom, approximately, okay? So let's look at the picture here. So this is our p-value. Our p-value is what? Huh? This is p value. This is p value. And it's roughly equal to probability t with 20 degree of freedom. Greater equal to what? 2.31. So bear this in mind and we look at what? The previous expression here. Okay? Probability under H9 is true, mu x minus mu y equal to zero. How likely test statistic, x bar minus y bar, greater or equal to 51.48 minus 41.52. And I simplify it, you come, how likely x bar minus y bar, greater or equal to 9.96, given mu x minus mu y equal to zero. After standardization, we get what? Roughly equal to probability, T with 20 degree of freedom, greater or equal to 2.31. Okay?